In this episode, we pick a dead team. A differential team. And it's North versus South. The Fantasy Football Show. Hello listeners and welcome to episode 5 of Planet FPL, the world where everything revolves around Fantasy Premier League. My name is James, this is season 3. My name is Serge. Yes it is season 3, people know we're in the third. Are you dead? You look knackered. Third season. Flew in from Amsterdam this morning mate. Did you? You never said that earlier. Yeah, you knew I was away this weekend, went to Amsterdam. Oh fuck yeah. Yeah, so my flight left Amsterdam at 7.45. I went with the missus a couple of days, cheeky break. Arrived at the airport in Amsterdam Saturday morning. So we had an early morning flight Saturday and an early morning flight today. It landed at 9 o'clock, so we took off at like 6.30. You didn't so. go to Amsterdam where I thought you went to Amsterdam then. Why? Well, you took the missus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that as well. I don't know what you think <laughs> is going on in Amsterdam. <laughs> but I'll tell you what was in Amsterdam this weekend, which I didn't know about. It was Gay Pride. And it was mad. Yeah? Mad. Like, here, Pride is all, is all well and good. It's celebrated this around Soho or whatever area you go five minutes out from wherever pride is happening you wouldn't even know it was happening that's the thing with a lot a case with a lot of stuff in London like I remember when it's London Marathon you go like five minutes out you don't know about it in Dam, it was like rainbow flags and stuff everywhere like you couldn't miss it the whole place was popping it's really good really nice. good laugh um, yeah so I was always I swam knackered I am right, battered cool. mate but FPL is now four days away and all that stuff that I was putting off for like days and days and days and quite a few of our correspondents and people will know it. Like, you know, joining all the mini leagues that people have sent me codes to and all that. I'm like, you know, that can wait. That can wait. Now I've got to fucking do all that this week, haven't I? You have, I've really mate, got yeah. to get it sorted. Dan, I'll be in your league by the end of the day uh, to set up a couple of other leagues. So I'm ready to rock and roll. Cool. What are we doing today? That, we have to sort out our North versus South teams for that uh, little competition set up by Mr. Tom Campbell for us. We have to pick a differential team, which we'll talk about in a sec, and we have to pick a zombie dead team. Um, I'm assuming Tom and Nick are running there. Who got this as zombie dead? Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's what we're going to win. We did so good for the first like three weeks last year. <laughs> four we weeks, were properly and then we buzzing. Were done. We got to about game week eight. I think. Yeah, we did quite well. At one stage, the we were of the season. We were four for something in their league. And then I think. as soon as Aguero got injured, and, and that was it. We were done. I remember for. them talking about it on their pod, and they were like. Yeah, and they got people who haven't performed yet, like Ozil and Ericsson, Ericsson and Goodmanson, and they never, and they never really did. Um, and Agu- losing Aguero, your captain, that was it. Anyone who had Salah captain um, went through and, and conquered all there. So we've got to pick a dead team, which which is always good fun to set and forget. I'm fascinated by the differentials uh, for this season. Last year when we did the differentials team, we had to pick players with ownership of less than 5%. And sell them when they crossed 10%. It was way too hard. This year, we're upping the percentages, right? If you're interested in doing that, by the way, our Palace correspondent, Migtavius, is running a league for under 5%. I've told him I'm not the bothering. Whole, it's too hard. It is hard. The <laughs> whole league, like, you, you have to sell them when they cross 5% in his league, do you? No, when they cross 10%. Same as what we did. So also. we're going to do uh, buy it under 10%, sell if they hit 20 20 is a bit high. 15, maybe. No, we'll go 20. I mean, I'm all, happy all with the... that, but, but under 10 is still considered differential, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. All well day long. And truly. Well and truly. That, there are plenty of teams with. We've kind of done it to make the team a bit more interesting yeah, this if you year look as at, well. Like, it was so restricted. There are so many um, There are so many squads. Villa's one, Burnley's one, where there isn't a single player over 10% yeah. ownership at the moment. So you're talking about an entire squad that you could select from at the moment. Which uh, team are we going to start with? Let's start with North v South. Oh, okay. That's good. Um, let's hot. start with North v South. Before we get into North v South... Um, just for the listeners so they are clear, I'm allowed to pick players from the following teams and then you can list the 10 that you're, you're allowed to pick from. But I'm literally about to just pull them up. Um, so I've got, obviously, the two Manchester clubs and the two Liverpool clubs. So I've got City, United, Liverpool, Everton, Newcastle, Burnley, Everton, uh, Burnley, Everton Leicester, Liverpool, sorry, City, United, Newcastle, Norwich, Sheffield United and Wolves. So Wolves and Norwich are the furthest south that I come. Yeah, the line breaks. It's divided kind of 
between uh, Villa and Leicester. And Norwich actually comes just slightly more north than Villa when you look at a, a map. Yep, there um, we go. So, so I've I've got Villa. No, it would have been easy to divide it if I took Norwich and you took Villa, but we've gone legitimate. 10 most southern, 10 most northern. So I've got the five London clubs. I've got Watford. I've got Villa. And I've got the South Coast clubs, Southampton, Bournemouth and Brighton. Mm. As much as uh, having Liverpool and United is a massive, massive advantage, there are still plenty of talented players in the London clubs. This is and much it's more... all about how you... But this, this is much more difficult for me than you. This is why I'm, I always wanted the South anyway, because it's a, it's it's a bigger challenge. It's more of a challenge. I yeah. feel like if, if things go the way that they potentially could, which is that the North team's banging in the points then maybe we'll look at restricting the number of City and you know, in Liverpool or something along those lines. But before we get into the North v South teams, I'm fascinated. In your current regular draft, mm. how many of your 15 are North and how many of your 15 oh, are South? Gosh. And I'll tell you my numbers while you figure it out. Nine of mine are North, six of mine are South. So I've got three City and three Liverpool. Uh, Edison, Walker, Sterling. Robertson, Alexander Arnold, Van Dyke. I got Perez, uh, Den Donker, and Lundstrom. So I've got nine are all uh, and yeah, Den Donker. I said sorry. So nine and Hayden. I've got a split basically. I've got seven south. Ten. I've got sorry. Seven. Oh, you got seven south already. In in my real team. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got wow. uh, Tom Heaton, Lucas Mora is back in. I asked the big. Oh, James, you said. Yeah, listen, Deli Ali got injured and yeah, shit changed. Exactly. Yeah. And we're gonna I'm gonna detail that on tomorrow's short form pod on Tuesday. Yeah. Callum Robinson at the moment is in as my punt. Uh, Tomo will be so fucking pleased. Ryan Fraser, Connor Wickham, or Bamiang. Robinson's not a north uh, south. Oh it? shit, I've only got six then, haven't I? Why did I think she was <laughs> 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 so kit? So I've only, yeah, I've only got six. So I've got Heat and Lucas Moore, Fraser. Kane or Bamiang Wickham. So you're the same as me, 9 6 split of North v South. So you got 9 North. North, That's yeah. That's why I said the South's much harder. Yeah, we're very heavily skewed towards the North already, which is what I was interested to see if you were. Connor Wickham way. doesn't even count. Mm. Um, I've been toying around a little bit. Now, I have to stress that we've got another little show coming out in two days. By that time, my North team will be a little bit more concrete, but. Shall I tell you my North team? Or do you want to tell me your South team? You, you talk me through your North team. I'm I'm so fascinated to hear this. Okay, Pope in goal. Robertson, Alexander-Arnold, Lucas Dean, Sterling, Kevin De Bruyne, Paul Pogba, Perez, Vardy, Jota, Wood. Nice. Yeah. I'm getting fucked. <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> on my bench, I've got Dendonka. I can't even remember who's on my bench now. Uh, Dendonka... Um, I had one of the Burnley defenders in Gibson and I think it was um, Dendonka. I can't remember. It was a shit defender. You planned this well. It was just a budget one. That's your first 11. Yeah, Yeah, my first 11 is Vardy Wood, Jota, Sterling De Bruyne, Pogba, Perez, Robertson, Trent, Dean, Pope. And I also have room for one more Liverpool and one more City if I choose to chop it up a little bit but they were getting a bit expensive <laughs> my, mine's a nightmare um, one of the reasons mine is a nightmare is I don't think there's a single good defensive asset from the Southern clubs <laughs> not a single one it's not a single player from the, the Southern clubs who I would consider for my other than uh, Heaton and goal and Heaton's my goalkeeper yeah, but here go back as well. to maybe uh, maybe PVA. I mean, you are stretching a little bit. As per Laqueta. We have 5.5 of the way Palace are playing at the moment. You know, way yeah. they look at the moment. Rudiger. As per Laqueta. Rudiger's unfit. I mean, Chelsea start with a difficult couple. We've spoken about them defensively. So, no, not great. My keepers at the moment. And by the way, I've done this. I've left, at the moment, I've got three million in the bank. <laughs> because Shit. you couldn't spend it. It's not I couldn't spend it. It's going to allow me moves once I know better is what I would say so for example I've left movements here so I can go to Pepe or Hyunming Sun once I know their availability yeah very easily but I don't want to start with either right no and there's no one else in that price bracket in the midfield that I mean I would have considered Ali can't go near Ericsson at the moment no I don't know if he'll be a Spurs player come Saturday exactly so at the moment my keepers are heating and button I'm going to start with a back four at the moment of David Luiz, 
the Tongan, Maitland Niles, and Cathcart at Watford. My other defenders, Mon Montoya. The reason I've gone down that route is uh, Watford and Brighton's rotation is good for yeah. a long time. They obviously play each other this weekend. Dell Stevens is my 4.5. He is the only 4.5 midfielder I can have. <laughs> Honestly, all the other good 4.5 midfielders fall in your category. So I've got Fraser and Lucas. I'm punting Pedro. Okay. And Lanzini as well. Although at the moment, I'm going to leave Lanzini on the bench this weekend at home to see. Yeah, makes sense. He uh, scored again. So I'm going to go 4 3 3. The front three is banging. Or Bammy and Kane and Wilson. That's where you've I got have to, the strikers. I have to go heavy up front. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm surprised. I mean, if Lacazette was fit, maybe you could even pop him in there as well. Yeah, potentially. Um, and I think, yeah. It's a shame because there are other strikers like Halle, who's in my current squad, that are decent as well. But you can only have three attackers. So what do you do at that point? The problem I thought you would find most is fitting everyone in. And it's yeah. interesting you've not gone for Salah in this. Yet. I haven't gone for Salah in any of my sides. Sterling could become Salah. And then I may pick up another City player. I was so disappointed that Leroy Sane... So have you only got, you only got two up. Liverpool now? Two Liverpool, two City at the moment. That's two ridiculous. Two Leicester. That's ridiculous. You've you got, go, you got to go third Liverpool, haven't you? Yeah, but then it really starts uh, squeezing the budget elsewhere. Yeah, true. So, I mean, Pogba, Perez, Vardy, Dean, Jota. It's not bad. <laughs> I'm going to give you that. Uh, Pogba's, on the, Pogba's a doubt at the moment, but as we he said on the... Uh, the short pod idea, we, yeah. we think he'll probably be fit. So I think we're all right there. I think we're all right. I'm, I'm genuinely going to have a tough ask with you on this. If my premium forwards don't hit, I've got, yeah, no, I've got no chance. It's dead. I, I, I really do think so. You're right. Let's talk then about what do you want to go next? I'm going to leave you in the driving seat. Dead team or differentials? Uh, should we do the dead team? Dead team is the rules are literally same as always. £100 million budget. And we can't make any transfers and no chips. Correct. Simple as that. Now, last year, as we said, we kind of started all right, but we didn't really lock down any form of, of plan in terms of what we were doing at the start. No. Um, we had shit on the bench and we need to think bigger than that this year, I, I think. I think we can't leave the bench. We can't punt the bench like we did last year. For we sure. didn't punt it. We picked what we thought were going to be regular starters. But they were crap. We yeah. had Cedric fucked off in January and mm -hmm. we had Duncan Stevens. Right, we've actually got to invest a bit more money into the defence. It's the whole season, right? People yeah. are going to get longer term injuries, etc. True. The first thing we need to decide is who do we think is going to be the top scoring FPL player this season? And that person is going in and they are going to be our captain. So choices are, in my opinion, Sterling... Agreed. It was, my, it was the first name that came to mind. Salah, Kane. You might want to make an argument for Aubameyang. You shook your head on Harry Kane. Yeah, I don't... Tr I'm, I'm looking in... Like, he feels an injury risk to me. He feels an injury risk to me. Well, everybody is over a whole season. Of course, yeah. One of the things I was thinking... Uh, Salah, I top scorer two years in a row. I don't know if you can look past him. But City are going to score a shitload of goals again. Well... I like the, the thought of Raheem Sterling because he was the first name that came to my mind. The only other thing, obviously, as well is everyone else will go Salah in their dead team. Correct. I'm going to fucking win it. Yeah. But then this is what we sat here and said last year. Yeah, and then we uh, ended up trying to be a bit too clever for our boots. So... Didn't end up... Are we saying then that Salah is captain? Correct. All right, fine. I, I, can, I can go with that. That means then, I think... So your Canes... Sterlings and all them probably can't be part of this team. You th you don't think we can at least get one more premium? We've in got to, we've got to consider more money for the the budget. Okay. You can do Salah and Sterling on this is going to be tough, mate. Sure. You're never going to captain Sterling. So you don't have to worry about that rotation. So Salah, in I can go with that. I'm happy. Salah's with that. Uh, much more consistent in his minutes as well compared to Sterling, who does get rotated a little bit more. Are we going big at the back? Your regular team's big at the back. My regular team's big at the back. So yeah, are we, I'd, I'd are we like saying to, that we want to go big at the back? Well, obviously, if we go Salah, we're not going treble Liverpool. No, but we can go double Liverpool in Trent and Robbo or Trent and VVD. Trent's a must for me. I'd be more tempted, as it's a dead team, 
to go VVD, just stick him in. Sure. Um, I'm, I'm probably go Robertson. Uh, just maybe. Uh, well, who do we think will score more? I mean, are we saying that because of Gomez, uh, Wan, um, Wan Bissaka? Listen to me. TAA is still a little bit of a, an issue, maybe defensively. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think TAA will play. I really do think TAA will play. So we go TAA and Van Dijk. TAA and Van Dijk. All right, Done. I'm happy with that. That's and the worst f- case, if we flip it, we can swap our minds on Robertson and TAA because the same price. But I think TAA and Van Dyke are, yeah, a given at the moment. And right, Sterling. Let's not, before we even look elsewhere, what do we want to do with City? City, City, City. Um, Can't go Aguero, I don't think. Kevin if you're going to go Aguero, you might as well go Kane or Bamiang for this. I think Kevin De Bruyne okay. is, is the next best thing. I think Kevin De Bruyne's on for maybe a 200-point season. So, yeah, Kevin De Bruyne is the next best thing. Do we want... And he's also priced ridiculously well at £9.5 million. Do we want Laporte in this? Um, he's expensive. But he's a lock, isn't he? Uh, I do think he is the most likely to yeah, be consistent. Shall we put him in for now and then we can figure I'd, it out? I definitely there. want to put Laporte in. So that's triple City that Where? we have in the team. So who have we got? Laporte, Sterling and Kevin De Bruyne. You want oh, to put sorry, st- Sterling, we've uh, got Salah. My bad. Are we taking Sterling out for the minute? Yeah. We go Kevin De Bruyne? Yeah. Yeah, De Bruyne. We could go money-wise. So we have uh, room for one more Manchester City player. Edison in goal? A set and forget? Mm, maybe. I'm, I, I'm thinking of the budget for the bench. I'm thinking more Bernardo Silva, to be honest. Uh, we'll try Bernardo Silva and then we can decide what, where we go from there. Uh, okay, so from the other top six, is there anyone we feel like we've got to have? If We we have to have one of Kane or Aubameyang, in my opinion. You really believe that? So we're still going with a premium forward? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to go for Harry. If Harry stays fit, he'll outscore him. Uh, I agree with you. So Harry Kane. 29 goals two seasons in a row. He's going to want to break that 30 barrier. So Harry in and vice-captain every We week. now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight players and £39 million. Pounds. So something's going to have to give somewhere along the line. So we got... Why don't we go at the back, Ryan and Button? Okay. It's the, uh, it's the four and 4.5 pairing. Can we assume that Dendonka is the best... Yes. Um, 4.5 million... Budget, yeah, hundred percent. So then Donker's in. in, Ryan and Button are in. We now have twenty six million for four five players. So then Donker natural sub, not a problem. I mean, in this team, he could well sit as third sub. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be considering the four point five million forwards. I don't want to be considering four million defenders. What's your views on uh, Diego Jota at six and a half million? You know he's going to play week in week out. I'm I'm very happy to go with that. Mm. I'm. I, I could stick him in. And I've, I'm. I'm a big fan of Hala. Watching the highlights again from this weekend, but um, I don't know. He is a risk as a new player, but he's link up play. He's, he well. He scored an own goal to be fair the weekend, <laughs> but he's scored as many regular goals as his own goals now. Um, his link up play seven and a half million. Very cheap for what he. So is. we got nineteen and a half million for five places. Yes. I think we should... How do we want to go with this formation? 3-4-3. Three, three. You want to go with another one up front? Uh, or another midfield. My only one thinking on the value there is you're going for another forward. It's going to be diff- difficult to fit in. I'm not feeling like your your kings and shit like that. Josh King at six and a half million. I'm not feeling no. it. No. I honestly think over the course of the season, seven and a half on Halle is going to prove to be decent value. It'll be 150 points. He's not going in that dead team, mate. You don't think so? No. Why? Sod that. Talk, talk us through your reasoning. We don't know nothing about him for him to be a player in a dead eh, team. True. I've seen him two games this season. Oh, the, the, the and reason, I know, I know you think you think he'll outscore Jimenez. I'd rather do that, uh, just go Jimenez and be, Jota up front. I think he'll be up there or thereabouts. The only difference for Ale at the moment is we've got no one else. We've got Chicharito who missed his bloody penalty on the weekend. Ale is the front man, guaranteed to play week in, week out. He stays fit, he plays. There's no, There's no denying that. That's what I'm really looking for in the dead team. They're fit, they play. Um, and where do we find the best? They're fit, they'll play value. Uh, I'll tell you who I want to sit 
stick in this. Tell me. I'm going to stick Rob Holden in. From the Gooners, do you think he's going to get the minutes? Yes. I think he's going to be Arsenal's number one centre-half this year. He's obviously not going to start the season. Yeah, I wouldn't agree with you. I think Socrates is a better player and uh, is more likely to start as and the more number expensive. one. He is more expensive, but I don't see Rob Holding as the main man. That's, a, still that's got a decent... Yeah, but he's going to be... He's going to sit on the bench, mate. Holding as a 4.5, I'm not against. I'm he's not disagree- sit as a I'm sub. Not, and I'm not disagreeing with having Holding in the dead team. All I'm disagreeing with is whether or not he's going to be the main man at Arsenal. I, I don't see that necessarily. Mustafi's still there. Socrates is going to be there. Uh, the talks are Koscielny will be gone within 24 hours, 48 hours. Bordeaux or one other club were in for him. To lose or something like that. Yeah. Mm. Um, that gives us 15 million for three players. So five on each. Mm. Lundstrom, four million. No, we're not, we're not picking in players for this, mate. I want, uh, if we're going to go another defence, I want a 4.5 nailed. He's That's Kelly's, Gibson and all them. I mean, look, if Tarkovsky was to go to Leicester between now and the deadline, yes, yeah, sorry, we're changing this and Ben Gibson's coming in. Mike Kelly's going to start the season for Palace. Mctavis messaged me today, said he thinks he'll start at 4.0. Has he got a direct not, line into... Not uh, considering for this. Well, he, he seems to think Sacco and Tompkins ain't going to make the opening day. Yeah. So, I mean, Palace, the, the predicted team that he sent me, which I'll, I'll share on the community later in the week, like, they're in trouble, Palace. Yeah. <laughs> they really are, mate. You've got Cathcart in your North-South team. You want him in? No, because I, I, I've done that because I've looked at it as a possible Watford-Brighton rotation. That's why I've done that. I mean, then, Diop or Balbuena are your two options there that are regular 4.5 million strikers. I'm not trying to shoehorn in a West Ham player just for the sake of it, but... Diop and Balbuena are going to, when fit, will play. Diop especially. 4.5 million. You've got Lewis Dunk is still available at 4.5. He may go to Leicester now. Lewis Dunk is a better shout than Issa Diop at 4.5 million. Yeah, but if he stays at Brighton, we've got that with the goalkeepers. Yeah. And we've, kind of, we've kind of written that off, haven't we? Yeah, I suppose we do. We, what about we Jamal? Him. Jamal Lascelles, Newcastle, the team going to be bottom of the league this year. We're not. How many minutes did Lascelles play last year? That would be a very good question. 2,745. And he barely crossed 100 points. He got 95 points. Yeah, but you, you're not... You're only paying 0. 0.5 from effective, aren't you? Yeah. That's all right. Mirovic is going to sit on the bench. So I think... I'm not feeling anyone from Newcastle. Um, so you'd be against Lascelles? Yeah, I would be. I'd almost go, yeah, I would take Diop All right, ahead I'll, of him. I'll, I'll go with Diop. We'll see how that looks. Um, and then we can always twist and shake. We've got ten and a half million to pick two players. Just as a recap for people listening to us doing this, because I'm sure it's fascinating viewing. We have Ryan and Button as our goalkeepers. Laporte, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Van Dyke, Rob Holding and Issa Diop at the back. Mo Salah is our captain, Kevin De Bruyne, Bernardo Silva, Leander Dendonka, and a gap in midfield, Harry Kane, Diego Jota, and a gap up front. We need a 4.5 million midfielder and a uh, 6 million striker. Or we need to drop the quality of Bernardo Silva. I never thought I'd say this. I think take Kane out. Kane out's not a problem. It's, it's, it's too much if he's you're never going to captain him. Sucking up a lot of budget. Could leave De Bruyne there as vice captain. Yeah, that's not a bad shout. Or Trent, or Van Dyke. Every other go, week go you're hoping for a clean sheet, right? Give or take with Liverpool. So That gives us plenty more to play with. So we can, you know, that, that allows us to look at, say, Callum Wilson, for example, Jamie Vardy. Vardy seems a good choice for this. What if we go something like? What does it leave us if we go Vardy He's and Wilson? nine million. If we had, you'd think taking both of those two would mean we needed a four point five million. So we could do that, and we'd have four players in the team that were four point five million, not including goalkeepers. Seems a little bit much. We're going to have to play one of them week in week out. I wouldn't be against just shoving Dendonka in there necessarily. You could um, even go to back four with Holden. Yeah, because he'll be auto subbed out most regularly. Yeah. So I don't really want to go 4.5 midfielders. They're all rubbish. All right. Um, 
I like that front three, though, for a dead team. Jota, Vardy, Wilson. That's yeah, all right. it's pretty, pretty all right. I mean, yeah. It's going to be a sacrifice somewhere, isn't there? Mm -hmm. We've got six from Liverpool City. I'm not feeling Bernardo Silva. That's my 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 issue. I, d I don't know why. I've just never really... I, I just don't think his FPL returns are fantastic for the money you pay. All right. I don't really want to go Fraser no. if we're going Wilson. I would rather go Fraser than Wilson. Mm, I'd almost go... I wouldn't go to Pogba. Um... Which midfielders can we afford at nine million or less? You've got the Sigurdsson. problem. The problem with Pogba, and you can't put him, he might fuck off in January. Yeah, that's true. Sigurdsson, Sigurdsson. To take out who? What in, instead of Bernardo? Actually, yeah, I I can go with that. Uh, he yes. outscored him by thirty points last year. Well, he's the sort of one as well, Siggy. If you're gonna put him in, you just got to put him in and and go with it, really, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Over the course of a season, he's consistent. 182 points last year, 181 two years ago, 158, 154. It was only the, the season before last where he only played half a season and he still racked up 96 points. You know who I'd like to stick in this team? Tell me. Son. Hung Min Son. Because. Oh, he's nine million. It's... It's not doable at the Nine moment. Nine and a half, and we have four and a half to play with. Is there with. a debate there for for a whole season? De Bruyne or Son? Is there a debate there? No, De Bruyne. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of inclined to agree with you, De mate. De Bruyne, he's just the consistency, and he's pre-season, he's been mean, man. He's bossing games. That's what I like about Kevin De Bruyne at the moment. I'm worried about not having him in my team. So we're stuck here looking for a 4.5 million midfielder? Yes. Shit. Uh, hey, uh, Hayden is the one. That's it. That's all that's left when you've no, got... No, it's not. When you've got Dendonka. It's not. I think I'd rather have someone who would who would possibly break through into the team a bit more this year, like Hamza Chowdhury at Leicester. Leicester have got strength and depth. Yeah, it's a problem. And Gwen Doozy will get minutes Yeah. with his haircut. But we said we wouldn't go this crap. No. Dendonka's fine because... He's better than a 4.5 million midfielder. I've said this, if he was 5 million, I think he'd be the best 5.0 choice. Yes. Um, what if we sacrifice Vardy or Wilson? I would sacrifice down... Well, Vardy's the one to sacrifice. Do you think? It, where are we going to? What price point? I'd rather, For the dead team, Jamie Vardy's a solid keep, in my then opinion. Then get rid of Wilson. All right, get rid of Wilson. Who do we like in... Is there anyone we like in there sort of like Josh King's range? Uh, not that low. Um, my favourite forward at that price ba is... Still, um, uh, Barnes or Wood? Mm, Don't think actually Barnes a good nah. show. Barnes train, Hindu monkey and all that. Nah. No? Nah. Not feeling it. I would take... Uh, no, I wouldn't take Jimenez... What about a punt then? Moise Keane. Oh, I don't know how that's going to go. Pookie. I was thinking Che Adams. Do you think he's going to get the minutes? Yeah. He's going to play ahead of or with Ings at six million. He's the one I think could break out, mate. Um, There's no point learning his history. He ain't got none. Yeah, true. <laughs> che Adams instead of uh, Wilson. Yeah, I like that. Is he a bench fodder? Rotator. No, he plays. Okay. He's got to play. Stick him in. That gives you six and a half million for your final midfielder. That's better. Because that's what we need to do here, really, is, is pick a team of players that are going are gonna to play. Manuel Lanzini at six and a half million? No, I'm not keen, mate. I think he'll be all right. You could have uh, Eose Perez or Tielemans for that price. That's better, isn't it? No, but... <laughs> What, the Lanzini? Three yes, and three. Is, three and three at the moment. This is, don't, this is for the whole season, remember? Yeah, I'd only be worried about his fitness. I wouldn't be worried about his minutes. He'll definitely be getting the minutes. It's a 6.5, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Perez or Tielemans. We're back there, aren't we? The whole community debate, which one? Uh, I mean, you know, my thoughts very clearly is Perez. I'm going to be sticking Perez in. But... For dead team, I would actually say Tielemans. I think Tielemans is more likely to get the minutes, more consistently. 
and uh, Perez could get rotated up front, played on the wide, played wide on the right or whatever. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I would say Tielemans in this one is a better shout. We've now got two Leicester players in Tielemans and Vardy. But we've That's got true. Ryan, Laporte, Trent, Van Dijk, Holding and Diop, Salah, De Bruyne, Sigurdsson, Tielemans, Dendonka. That midfield looks pretty solid. Vardy, Jota and Che Adams. Where I'm uncomfortable is holding Diop and Che Adams. But we don't have any more money left. Yeah, well, we could look under 6.5 for a midfielder. Uh, I'd rather see if there's another alternative to Che Adams. What about Jay someone Adams. to sit in there? Like I know it would mean double walls, but like a Moutinho or a Neves. I like the midfield. I think there's good. the midfield is decent. Tim Westwood? Tim Westwood. He's a bit pricey this year. Mm. I don't know if there is anywhere else we can potentially go. Uh, the only other option to Adams would be McGoldrick, which gives us an extra half a million. No, forget that. De- de- say like I've um, I've kind of said I'm going I'm at the moment I'm going to gamble on Callum Robinson. It's a gamble. Yeah. It's not it's not a dead team player, mate. Nah, that's true. You want consistency. Uh, so Ryan and Button means we've always got a playing keeper. Yes. Until Brighton buy a goalkeeper in January, mm. it's not unthinkable. But Matt Ryan's all right. Yeah, he's that's, not that, bad. He'll that, play. that should cover us there. It's what a lot of people are doing as a strategy, in it. Forget it. Nine point five million. Get on with it. It's 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 the obvious one that's that's sitting there. Mm-hmm. Um, there's others I've seen, sort of Pickford and Stek- uh, Stekelenburg. Stekelenburg. But I don't know if jo- Jonas Lossels might have had a price now. Uh, Lossel, I would have thought, would be number two. Yeah. So that's probably avoidable. Yeah, Rutten, Rutten, Rutten and Bayern. Button. Yeah. Jonas Lossel's in at do. four and a half. Should we just go fucking Tielemans, mate? Tielemans. Rather than Paris. I like this uh, this team. I don't think it's too bad. You've got creative players in Sigurdsson, De Bruyne, Salah. I don't like Jay, Jay Adams, but beggars can't be choosers at this point. Well, that's the punt, isn't it? Mm. Trossard? Yeah. It's a punt, isn't it? Trossard's decent, though. It's a punt, isn't it? You don't know if they're going to be good or bad. I think we should sleep on this. I think we should go Tielemans and sleep on this. Correct. So as it stands, right, the starting starting uh, 11 will be Ryan, Laporte, Trent, Van Dijk, Salah De Bruyne, Sigurdsson, Tielemans, Che Adams, Jota and Vardy. Then Donker, Holding and Diop on the bench. Feeling comfortable? Yeah, I quite like that actually. Vice-captain Vardy or De Bruyne? De Bruyne. Although there isn't much in it. I can't... Last year when we did this, this will sound ridiculous. We went with Mane because we didn't go with Salah. Correct. And we decided in our wisdom on this podcast to put Ericsson vice-captain rather than Mane. Yeah. Why the fuck did we do that? Um, Mane was cons- was inconsistent prior to that. Last year was his first real big season. Should we move on to differentials? Well, that's going to be a lot trickier now. So we do have... we do have This is all going to go out on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> last year was the first year... Like Mane had crossed 150 points, but only just before, 156 and 160. Um, prior to that, 147. Last year was his first big, big season. Yeah, no, it's true, yeah. And there was Ericsson's consistency, which is why I think we the fell back on that. always delivers. But we knew that Mane years. had the potential to, to go that explosive... Yeah, we should have gone still there. Gonna That's have what one makes eye. me think, should we go Vardy rather than De Bruyne mm-hmm. as vice? But look, with Salah, we shouldn't have to think about that too no, often, exactly. to be very honest. Differential team. Yes. So this is tough. And the other thing we possibly need to be a bit careful of here is it's Monday and we, there's some players we would potentially want to consider, I've had a look, who are sort of ownership at like 9%. Yeah. And I think come... Friday they'll be ten percent. <laughs> yep. And in which case we can't have them, so we maybe would just uh, avoid but leave a little bit of money in the bank, perhaps. What we did last year, we looked at City Liverpool first and and saw who we could have. Do, should we? No one. Literally no one. There's no one you can have from them teams. Uh, well, you you yeah. There's no one. Do you want Gomez, Matip, or Lovren? Not yet. Okay, do you want... Uh, for midfield, you can have anyone other than Salah and Mane. Then no. And up front, you can have all of them. 
No. Right. You don't want Brewster. You don't want Firmino. You don't want any of them. What about City? Uh, okay, in defence, you could have Zinchenko or Stones. Either a decent option. Why don't we stick them both in? The thing with this is, as well, remember, and we've had this before, money's not going to be a problem. Yeah, probably Because not we can't Afford the premiums. The premiums. Yeah. It's only going to be like jumping, like I said previously, it would be the same for my South team, jump into like Pepe or Sun straight away. Yeah. We might want to jump to both. So we, you know, we should probably have a couple of midfielders in are, are quite expensive. Mm. So, I mean, we can stick this in Chanko and Stones both in, mate. We certainly Double can. Double City. Kevin, uh, sorry, David Silva is the only midfielder. Worth a consideration. Uh, Leroy Sane, but we don't think he's going to be fit for the start of the season. David Silva, he played yesterday. He's still silky as David Silva, and it's his last season at, at City. I think he, he's not a bad shout. i stick him in for now, but I, I don't really like that. Mm. All right, look at Spurs. Since the correspondents think we'll finish third. <laughs> uh, you can have anyone. Which means well, I can't have Apart Harry fucking Harry Kane, Kane, can I? Apart from Harry Kane. You can have anyone else. So we can stick Mora in? We can stick Mora, but he's at 9.1% right now. And you know after this podcast goes oh. out, he'll be at above 10%. So it's almost not even worth thinking about. Lamella. I don't know if he'll get the minutes. Neither do I. Six million, 0.6% at the moment. Like you said, budget is not an issue, so I think we're all right with that. Uh, now, Arsenal, would you consider Lacazette? Is he an injury doubt at the moment? He is. And he, but he's at 7.8%. So that's fine. Yes. Yeah, avoids a future transfer as well, even if he doesn't play this weekend. Mm, I think I don't mind a bit of Lacazette as low ownership. All right, we go with that. Chelsea, you can have anyone. Yeah, but we just want to see it. Watch and wait it. <laughs> Apart from Pulisic, you can have anyone. I I just think watch and wait. Skip that. We'll come back to him if we need to. United, who can we have at United? Uh, almost anyone. You can't have David De Gea. You can't have Juan Bissaka and Harry Maguire. I think Maguire's is going to come down. Just out of interest, where's Maguire's ownership? Fifteen percent. But that's jump. mainly because of all the idiots on uh, Twitter that are tweeting teams with five United defenders at the moment. Hello, Andy. Let's talk FPL. He's got four only, so he's <laughs> only halfway there. There's people with five because they had Wan Biscuit and Maguire <laughs> ready and waiting to tweet their teams. Ain't going to last for long. And if you're going to go into game week one with five United defenders, Mazel Tov. <laughs> but it's not a good idea. What's Rashford's ownership? Rashford is at 17%. Pogba? Greenwood at 14.4. Pogba Greenwood at 14.4. Stop it, price, please. It's isn't it? 7.9% um, on Paul Pogba. Oh, right. He's got to be in. Yeah, all day long. Yep. That allows the transition as well, potentially. Exactly. Luke Shaw is only at 2.3% ownership. He's been bombing forward on the left. I think yeah. we'll come across more attacking fullbacks at that price. I think <laughs> we would quite interest possibly me more. we will. Um, so so far we've picked six players and two of them are injured. It's going, yeah, it's going, <laughs> it's going well. It is. What's um, at Leicester? Can we have any of them? Uh, well, in the midfield you can't have Perez and Madison, but Tielemans is only six point seven percent ownership. Oh, Tielemans in. <coughs> Vardy's at ten point five. He's just over. Is that all his ownership is? Mm. Fuck me. Let's have a look at goalkeepers. We can have anyone except Alison Edison, Pickford De Gea, Ryan and Bun. I think we should come back to that. Larice. It's the least important position. Uh, yeah, quite possibly. But then there's, there's, I mean, we've got Leno. Do you know what? Here's a Flappy shout Hansky. for goalkeepers, which is a shout just for this. And I would not recommend anybody does this for their real team. You would be insane. Money's not a problem here, is it? No. What about Loris and Leno? We'll do it for now. And then we'll see. The only issue with Loris is 9.2% at the moment. So he's bordering on, but I don't yeah. know how much that will grow by. As the game gets bigger, I'm not sure if it will. That's a shout. Just, mm. I mean, you talk about rotating keepers. You wouldn't, you would never spend 10.5 ordinarily on goalkeepers. No. Nope. Essentially, with this, we can't spend the money. No. Nah. So it could work. 
<coughs> right, forwards. The most highly owned forwards, less than 10% at the moment. Uh, Bobby Firmino at 9.9% ownership. 9.9? Yeah, so forget oh, him. Well, I did write him to Norwich, that's going to grow. De La Feu, Lacazette, who we already have. Yeah. Shane Long, Sebastian Aller, Nketiah, Eddie, Glenn Murray, <laughs> and uh, Pukki, and then everyone else below. The, w- the wife... The other night, she she started setting up her team last night. Our Planet FPL wife. Yeah, I'm having. I know two players I'm having. Are you having? Yeah, Dale Stevens. <laughs> no, no, she didn't Dale say Stevens Dale Stevens actually. Yeah, I'm having Kane. Yeah, obviously. And I'm having Pookie. <laughs> <laughs> I like Pookie's name. Fair play. <laughs> so Timu Pookie's in her dress. You know, he got Liverpool away first game. Love. I don't care. I'm having him. I like his name. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. We're not having Timu Pukki. No, we are not. <laughs> Sorry to say. Uh, yeah, anyone you fancy? Oh, from that list, no. Yeah. Can we go further down and see what's going Ings, striking? Lukaku, Joel Linton, Origi, Giroud, Jesus. Jesus came on yesterday ahead of Aguero. Yeah, there's a thought that he might start at the moment, but I'm not. I'm not keen. What about my boy Che Adams? Che Adams is obviously yeah well le- well it's done ownership. Yeah, I don't know. It's a bit of a punt. I'd I'd take he's at one point six percent. I'd take Alaire over him any day of the week. But then we still do need one striker. Oh, I tell you what, if you want to stick the fucking prick in, stick him in. I hope he scores against. What you about this um? <laughs> we now have twenty seven million for four players. That's what I said. We can't even spend the money. About it just before we move on, um, that famous Englishman Joe Linton. Joe Linton is very low ownership, um, but he was still on the first page. Two point seven percent, and he's six million rated. Joe and Linton or Adams? Uh, just based on his hair, I'd say Joe Linton. I feel like a guy that's dyed it blonde. I really thought you were going to say just on the basis they're playing Arsenal this weekend. No, 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 no. Joel Linton. Differential. Right, so we can look at... Uh, £40 million pounds they paid for this guy, yo. Yeah, well, yeah. I've seen money spent worse and better. Yep. We can get some expensive defenders in here, can't we? Uh, we should look at that well, first because we can go with a cheap midfielder for the well, last. Well, you say that. Uh, at... 9.7 and 9.1 respectively at the moment is Azpilicueta and David Luiz. Forget them too. Uh, and then as you move further down, Pereira at Leicester, 7.2. Nah. Not interested in Leicester defensively now. Chilwell, 5.5. I'd be more interested in Chilwell than Pereira. Toby Alderweireld? No, there's no point. Winston Reid is doing well, probably because he's 4 million. 5.6% <laughs> ownership. Golonzo? You fancy a no, little bit of Marcus Golonzo? skip that. It's, fuck Chelsea. Aaron's at 4.5 million at Norwich, if you fancy something no, interesting. Have we not or any, Olibas. There's not any... What about like you people like PVA? Uh, Van Arnholt... Let's at least have some fun with this. <laughs> ...is at very low ownership. 7.3. Stick him in. You think PVA? He's yeah. got the attacking threat, for sure. What about um, Everton? Everton, you could have Seamus Coleman. Oh, stick him in. You think Seamus Coleman? Although, just... 3.9% ownership. Just a word of caution on that. I know it's Spirit Blues thinks that Everton are trying to buy a right back between now and the end of the window. I think Sadibi was the right back up. Monaco's been linked, maybe. Everton are still going to do some more business, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, I mean, we haven't even got any like bench players in this squad. How much money have we got left? 16 million. We've got 16 million for a defender and a midfielder. Correct. I'd love to stick Ericsson in now. Uh, Christian Ericsson at the moment is less than 10% ownership. But I know you've got that. the choice of so many players here. Lucas Mora being one of them. Neves, Kante, yeah, we think, Grealish. We think Mora's going to. Barkley. We think Mora's going to be over 10%. Martial. Especially yeah. after I release the podcast tomorrow and tell everyone he's back in. Pepe. Oh, that's a gamble, isn't it? Pepe, 5.4% ownership. Stick him in, mate. He's got room to grow there and it gives us a 6.5 million defender. Yeah, large straight move to Sun if it fucks up as well. Yeah, exactly. Defenders at 6.5 million with the low ownership. 
you can have any defender you want in the game. Marcus Alonso, Azpilicueta. I think Azpilicueta actually is over... Uh, he's 9.7% still, as he was two minutes ago. The problem with this as well, once we pick this, picking a fucking 11. Yeah. Jesus. Who, I mean, out of that front eight, David Silva, Lamella, Pogba, Tielemans, Pepe, Haller, Joe Linton and Lacazette, who would you leave out? Joe Linton. Well, there's a chance, and obviously, Haller. like Lacazette might not play this weekend. And uh, actually, to be honest, at the moment we'd probably leave Pepe out because mm. he probably won't start. Correct. We need a defender. Doherty? He's it, not likely to play, but he's at 3.5% ownership. And we've got the money burning close. a hole in our pocket. Yeah, do it. Stick the dock in. And we've got good defensively as well. Yeah. We don't need to worry. I mean, Doherty, six million. You're mad if you start with him, but it's not mad for us. No, exactly. So you've got Loris, Zinchenko, Stones, Coleman, Van Arnholt, Doherty, David Silva, Lamella, Pogba, Tielemans, Pepe, Lacazette, Joel Linton and Haller. We had the issue with the differential team last year where we, we stacked up a load of injuries and then didn't have much to room to manoeuvre without taking quite a few hits, if I remember correctly. So having 15 decent players is not bad. Well, hopefully something will stick out. I mean, even Adam was saying, he said he'd never say it publicly. Sorry, Adam, I'm going to say it publicly. He said Oz, <laughs> he said Oz will play well last night. oz has been <laughs> playing well pre-season. oz has been playing well pre-season. Um, and yeah... He's someone like Lamello. Is that just a transfer waiting to happen, though? Yeah, that was your shout. So if you want him, you have him. I would take uh, Lanzini over him. You got Hala. You've already got your way on that one. Yeah, I know. I'm not having that as well. We've got no Spurs players. Go on, have one. Have a Spurs player in the differential team. This is all about a little bit of fun, isn't it, at the end of the day? I think he might start in the whole... Of Who? a four three one two Lamella at the weekend. I'm really not sure what's happening with Ericsson. It, it's not right. My sneaky feeling on Ericsson at the moment is that it will still be a Spurs player when the window shuts and he'll leave in a couple of weeks before the uh, European window closes. Interesting that you think that. Yeah, I think that's a serious possibility. Mm. It's just not right. The, the yeah. vibe's not right. The, the reason I like the way that we've this differential team set up in Lloris and you've got everybody's a starter give or take one or two an injury and rotation picking a team every week is going to be a nightmare it will be but we can do it fixture dependent and also it allows us to every two weeks roll a transfer forward so that um, we can build them up in twos and make double transfers and not have to take hits what would be our target for this team last year we should say our dead team and the differential team both finished about 3 million last year I think the dead team beat the differential team De uh, I would hope for top million with a differential team, top million would definitely be a good achievement. That would be a, great, a great achievement. achievement. And the dead team is to win the zombie league, man. Uh, I, yeah. I believe in winning the whole flipping thing. So I really think we should do that. All right, let's go with that. So we've got Joe Linton and Haller up front. Tell, tell the people who we've gone for. We have Larice and Leno as our rotating goalkeepers. Uh, in defence, we have Zinchenko, John Stones, PVA, Seamus Coleman... Matt Dirty, David Silva, Lamella, Pogba, Tielemans and Pepe making up a very strong midfield. And then Lacazette, Joel Linton and Haller up front, all owned by less than uh, 10%. The, uh, yeah. We will review this and we will talk about it again a little bit on Wednesday. Correct. Do you want to talk, uh, while we're doing this, do you want to talk current draft at all? My team at the moment uh, hasn't changed, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I'm going into the start of the season with Triple City, tri and tri uh, Triple City, Triple Liverpool, of which five of which are in the back back line. So t uh, Trent, Carl Walker, Van Dijk, Robertson and Edison at the back. Five defensive players from two clubs. I feel like if I'm going to do this, I can't sub any of them out for the first 10 game weeks. I need to take the rough with the smooth. Because even if they concede in, a, in the first two, they could still then go on four clean sheets in a row. 
So if I'm doing this, I'm doing it with no defensive changes for 10 weeks. I think you just got to let it go. The, the question, mark, mad. we are sitting there. This is uh, legitimate. Me and Serge are sitting here right now with the exact same back four. I thought you were going with back five. Well, I'm concerned about Laporte at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and I've chucked Edison into the mix as well. So Edison, Trent, Walker, VVD, so Robbo. They're staying in. Sterling is is pretty much staying in. Perez, is, Lucas Perez is staying in. Callum Wilson is staying in. Harry Kane is staying the in. Other, the other thing that's thrown the change for me is the doubt on Lacazette. Mm. So I've upgraded to Aubameyang. Yeah. Fuck it. Kane game week one or Bamian game week two, I'll I'll see you Salah and I'll take you on and what will be will be. That's what I've decided to do. So something I had to give in the midfield. So I had a midfield three. If I had Laporte as a back five, I had a midfield three of Lucas, De Bruyne and Fraser. So something was going to have to give. Um, and it was Laporte? It, before the weekend, I would have... Well, yeah, partly. Before the weekend, I'd been happy to lose... Lucas, but then the midfield would have just looked so weak. I probably would have been going De Bruyne, Robinson, Fraser. Whereas the three of them with Lucas, I just feel I've got a little bit more firepower. Walker's a concern because it looked like getting uh, Cancelo in from Juventus. I don't think it's an immediate concern. But eventually. But I think, yeah, the people I speak to in the know think he needs every chance to heal oust Walker. So, for example, Walker wouldn't have been our, uh, a choice for our dead team at the moment. I, th I think Walker is probably the best opening day City defensive choice at the moment. That's why he's in. And you're not picking a team for the whole season, right? No, exactly. What I may end up doing, at the moment I've got uh, Ceballos, my three punts, my two punts I would say, is Ceballos and Ale, and you could probably put Ayoso Perez into that mix as well. Because um, my bench is Dendonka, Lundstrom and Hayden. Two of those are rubbish. Um, and Buttons, my my other my reserve goalkeeper. My only strategy that I have think I'm um, thinking about at the moment is changing Raheem Sterling to Kevin De Bruyne, which would be jumping on your bandwagon. It will give me two and a half million to turn Ceballos into someone better, around the eight million pound mark. Probably Gilfie Sigurdsson or something like that. I may even downgrade Allaire to Jota, and that gives me nine million. And then suddenly I'm in a different league of who I can have in my midfield. Um, and I don't think going from Halle is a big drop, but the two hosts of Planet FPL both going into the opening game of the season with neither Sterling nor Salah. You've got Sterling sitting in your team yeah, right now. Yeah, if I if I was to downgrade to KD, downgrade to KDB, we are not advocating that anyone should mad. go without Raheem Sterling or Mohamed Salah. Apart we from are... the fact that we're both going to do it, <laughs> maybe, maybe. I've said it from when it was announced. Those three Liverpool boys at the back, the value on them is way too good. And in my opinion, supersedes the fact that I have to captain Mohamed Salah. And that's the choice that I've made. If one of those three got injured, or I, like I said, if even if Addison got injured, I would reassess that and probably throw Salah in the team. The only thing I'd say on top of Salah is... Yeah, he looked very good yesterday. I didn't watch the whole game. I was at Spurs. Looks fit. Mm -hmm. But also, let's not forget that around the time of the, the blank at Everton and the blank at, particularly at Fulham, when we know a few people triple captained him, everybody couldn't wait to bomb him out of their squad. So he hit form again at the end, but it's a big price to pay. I can't argue it. You look at the opening fixtures. Top top point score in the game two I would, years in I a row. I would even go ahead and say, you know, if someone says to me, if you had both, would you captain Salah or Kane this weekend? No, I would captain Salah. Mm -hmm. How was Harry Kane in the game against Inter Milan that you were at? Quiet. He played, uh, him and Mora played as split forwards, similar to how we said it on the earlier pod earlier, uh, how United have been setting up kind of Martial and, and Rashford. Uh, quite a bit of a distance between them. 4-3-1-2 doesn't particularly suit Harry. Mm -hmm. I'm hopeful, though, that we'll still play 4-2-3-1 this weekend. Um, four, if it's 4-3-1-2, Lucas is a great shout this weekend. I am not Pochettino. I do not know which of the two formations we're going to start with this weekend. But I, I feel at, at this moment, if I go without Lucas Mora, I'm going to hate myself 
<laughs> come Sunday. <laughs> so I'm doing it. And, and the other thing on, on Lucas as well, just a little bit, uh, we'll, we'll, I don't want to go too detailed about Spurs because we're, we're going to do it in detail tomorrow. Um, Ali's out with a hamstring injury. So even beyond game week two, I mean, if, if we stick with a 4-2-3-1, it's Sun one side and Lucas the other. And then it, it's not a two-week punt anymore. It's something beyond. No. So are you at the moment going Lucas Mora? Interesting. There we go. So uh, thanks for bearing with us in this episode. I feel like we've been jibber-jabbering and chatting through players and trying to pick a team whilst people are watching. So uh, I don't know how uh, fun it was for you to watch, but I really hope it was. Um, and do us a favour. Do tweet us at PlanetFPLPod promise just just tweet us if both of us go without Salah and Sterling that you still listen to the show oh don't do that still and look, listen to the show look how you said tweet at Planet FPL yeah, pod yeah, as well you're on Twitter more than I am you won't even go on Twitter till like Saturday so my account's matter. been blocked my account's been blocked <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it hasn't really um, yeah so uh, there we go we've put together the dead team put together a differential team we're gonna sleep on them for f- 36 hours and then come back and really finalise where we are with them hopefully the transfer window won't be too hectic in the next kind of day or so um, but in the meantime tune in tomorrow where we've got the first of our West Ham and Tottenham specific specials where we're going to be looking at, at uh, the preseason results and what the potential lineups are going to be for game week one do not end this podcast without telling people what's happening on August 24th please August 24th Planet FPL live two um so yeah a follow on to planet fpl live one which was on fa cup final day and was a great great day out both the videos from planet fpl on live are on the youtube channel youtube.com forward slash planet fpl no the youtube the youtube the youtube the youtube um so we've got uh we've got norwich uh remind norwich chelsea's the early kickoff isn't it norwich mm. chelsea's the early kickoff at 12 30 on saturday bank holiday weekend followed by 3 till 4.30, a live recording of the podcast whilst 3 o'clock games are happening. We'll be reacting Jeff Stelling style. I'll be Jeff Stelling. You can be uh, Matt Letizia. And uh, Why did I get that gig? I don't know, because your face looks like his. <laughs> and uh, that, was five... a, that was a bit unfair on Matt Letizia. Was oh. <laughs> 5.30 is none other than Liverpool v Arsenal, uh, by which point we'll have had plenty of beers and there'll be a lot of FPL bants going around. I am aware, for the Gooners of fearing it, I am aware of quite a few Gooners who are coming. So it'll be good bants. Yeah, don't worry. You're not going to get... Uh, just you, you never know. Pepe might be on form by then. Lacazette, Aubameyang, you might... I you don't might. even really mind. I mean, I don't ever want them to win a game of football, but if they're going to beat, you know, beat someone like Liverpool, a potential title rival, then yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, go for it. it. Yeah. Go for it. So yeah, pl- the tickets are available. Uh, jump to, jump onto Twitter, Planet FPL Pod, to find the link to Eventbrite to get the tickets, or Google search Planet FPL Live too. I'm sure you'll find it. They're only a fiver, which covers your first drink because we want to regulate the numbers of people coming in. I mean, that's about it, James. Uh, before we go, Sam did me. mean to tell you, I'm gonna stitch this guy up right now. Me? No, Sham. This guy. Oh, Sham. Sham from Two Guys One Cup. Correct. We had a little. We had a little bet. Did you? Yeah. On what? Quite sizable. <laughs> Jack Wilshire's total FPL points this season. Oh, you guys have had a bet, have you? <laughs> how, how much have you bet? Uh, I wouldn't reveal okay, the, the number. About, but and it's over or under. So he said over a number, you said under a number. Is that well, the way it works? Basically, he 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 said he sent, he, he was banging on about how well he played for you at the weekend. And I said, go on and show me him in his, show me him in your fucking draft. Yes. So he showed me him in his draft. Okay. I was like, straight away, I didn't even respond to it. I just went, right, me and you bet this year. Yeah. He said, what, teams or Wilshire points? And I went, well, if you're keeping Wilshire in both. And he said, oh, I don't know if I'm starting with him. I went, all right then, let's just have a bet on uh, Wilshire. Go on then. So I, he, he said, uh, how much do you want to bet? I said, no, you decide and you name your terms. So he come back to me and he said, uh, yeah, uh, over under 90 points. And I went, don't be stupid, mate. I'll give you 80. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He's never hit 80 before. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at his game week history now, Sham. 17 points last year, 388 minutes. 46, 61, 6, 36, 76. So Mo Salah scored more points last year than... Jack Wilshire has in the last six years. <laughs> Is that right? Honestly, yeah, I'm just doing fag packet mass there. That's 107, 
120, 130, 160. Six, six league goals in his career, that's correct, more, isn't it? More... Uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. More more points Mo Salah scored last season than Jack Wilshere in the last six, and you want to have a bet on it. Now, <laughs> if Jack Wilshere plays 30 games, he will score more than 80 points. Will he? So the bet is almost on will Wilshere stay fit or will he get injured? Yeah. That's uh, that's really So Sid to Sham, you can pay me at Planet FPL Live 4 or... If, if you haven't given up by Planet FPL Live free. <laughs> Which will hopefully be around Christmas. Sham, love you, mate. Nice bet. Yes. Love you. Good luck. Uh, I mean, I'm not doubting that Jack Wilshire has, has played well and shown promise, but how many times has he done that previously? So I'm all for him staying fit. I want him to stay fit and play well in the centre of our midfield because uh, him with Declan Rice will give us a lot of options. But let's see. Let's see. Uh, anything else to add other than make sure you jump onto the YouTube channel to check out our people's poll where we talked about We should we should say poll. more on this what we're um, doing. So between now and Friday, so tomorrow we're going to do Spurs West Ham tactically predicted starting 11s in a bit more detail. Wednesday we're going to kind of review this and probably our own draft just see where we're kind of at. Yeah. Thursday we've got uh FI underscore FPL addict 123 our West Ham correspondent and Johnny, FPL, Pringle, our Man City correspondent, they're both coming on. We're going to preview West Ham City and, and look at their sort of thoughts for the season ahead. Friday, we're going to do our regular Sky feature in the afternoon. Correct. Then we're going to stream live on YouTube. Uh, morning. Uh, yeah, so it'll be out about lunchtime. About lunchtime. About lunchtime, man child? Yeah, man child. No. None of that delay like today. Lunchtime. Away. Lunchtime. Well, about lunchtime. Yeah, yeah. At lunchtime. <laughs> this guy's no. screwing. Six o'clock, we're going to jump on live uh, YouTube, live stream, ask, answer some last minute cues you may have, although you really shouldn't have them at that time, um, <laughs> <laughs> and tell you our confirmed final drafts once we know all the team news. And at eight o'clock, we're going to live stream during Liverpool Norwich. Reactions to the game, see my face when Salah gets hat trick and when the, the clean sheet treble up goes bust for the two of us. Yes. We'll be scouring Twitter for the opinions and Mr. Manchild is going to be sitting on the sofa with us joining us. You watching the game? Matt Child, are you watching the game? Yep, yep. Oh, Matt Child. Is he coming in as well? as well? Yeah. But he'll come in uh, after the game's finished two hours. The girl's letting you out on a Friday night, mate. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, so yeah, do stay tuned. This is going to be a busy week with content coming out every single day and sometimes twice a day. So there we go. <laughs> Everybody heard that snort. Keep it in, mate. <laughs> Ciao for now. Give me music, man, child. I love you, boy. <laughs>